I solicit each and every one of you your support for my re-election bid. Um, and so in respecting the social distancing requirements, this basically is a virtual meeting. However, we have solicited questions um, from our registrants uh, beforehand. Uh, and we'll continue to solicit questions during the meeting uh, while keeping in mind that we want to end promptly at uh, 7 30 a.m so i will i will turn over the uh the mic to uh, renee and she will um, uh, start walking us through the program hi everyone um so as larry mentioned my name is renee plain i'm the co-owner of in plain sight marketing and um, because I have three crazy kiddos at home with me, my video is going to be off. They like to make lots of guest appearances. Um, the purpose of tonight's event is for you guys to have an opportunity to ask Larry questions and for him to have a chance to connect with you guys, the residents of Douglas County, um, while of course following those social distancing guidelines. Some general information for tonight. Um, we have muted everyone for the town hall. Um, because this is our first one and it's a very brand new process to all of us, we wanted to start with, with something a little bit basic first. Um, Larry is currently planning on holding a town hall each Wednesday at 6.30 until the week prior to election day, barring any unforeseen circumstances. So if you had friends that missed this one um, and want to jump in on another one, if you want to see him cover different topics that weren't covered tonight, you will have that opportunity. The idea is, is for him to connect with as many people as he possibly can because that's, that's what this is all about, right? Um, we are recording tonight's town hall meeting. It's going to be shared on Larry's website and social channels for those who are unable to attend. Um, and this will be the plan for future town halls as well. Um, just as a, another note, um, some of you have your videos on, which is perfectly fine. Just remember that we can see you and you might be in the video. Um, questions, as Larry mentioned, we have received some questions via email and direct message on Facebook. So we'll be answering those. I saw a couple of screens go off. <laughs> um, uh, so we'll be answering some of those tonight. We are also utilizing the chat box in Zoom. Um, to take any of your guys' questions that did not have an opportunity to submit prior. Um, Larry mentioned that we'll be keeping this to the one hour mark. And um, we'll both be watching the clock because we, uh, Larry really wants to be respectful of your time and he appreciates you joining us tonight. So with that, um, we're gonna start with our first question that was submitted via Facebook Messenger. And Larry, that question is, what steps are you taking to help local businesses, ranchers, casino workers, and other residents affected by COVID-19? Good question. Um, um, first of all, I believe we do need positive experience leadership that continue, continues to look at the future of our county and get it back to economic health. And, I am focused on keeping our county healthy and observing the laws. Um, I can see a recovered um, Douglas County, and we need to work with our governor and legislature to ensure that our employees and employers receive all the assistance that that government has to offer and has promised. Uh, I've been working with Senator Cortez Masto's office and Congressman Amade to um, to correct the lack of, of support for our casino em employees and obtaining assistance for our ranchers, both of whom were discriminated against by the SBA. I'm also working with the National Association of Counties uh, and our federal, federal lobbyists who are supporting the, uh, using the uh, coronavirus relief funds and uh, for more funding to local governments to help us help us, when I say us, I mean the county, recover tax revenue losses. I have sent um, Governor Sisolak um, um, recommendations of various community members who can serve on his uh, recovery task force. These are local people, these are local business people uh, who can advise him on local small business issues and, and actually when they think we should get back to work. Obviously, this, this crisis, the C-19 crisis, has unleashed um, 
a couple of very serious threats to our community. The first, of course, is the healthcare crisis, and that that may take months to contain. I'm going to urge, can't tell you this uh, uh, long enough or fast enough, I, I urge everyone to be, uh, to obey the guidelines so that we can we can flatten the curve. Uh, we certainly appreciate all of our residents as we have seen a flattening of the curve here in Douglas County, and that's awesome. Uh, the second, the second crisis is an economic one, and it has the potential to be devastating to our small business owners, service industry workers, uh, fixed income seniors, and frankly, taxpayers of all ages. I'm working closely with the uh, Carson Valley Chamber and the Visitors Authority on plans to reopen all of our businesses. Uh, and, and when businesses do reopen, I urge all residents to support our local businesses at bars and restaurants. I believe it, it could possibly be months before we see many tourists from out of the areas coming to Douglas County. Um, so our businesses rely heavily on our locals to support them. Um, in the meantime, uh, consider ordering online uh, from local restaurants and, or for delivery or pickup. And when you receive a great meal uh, from one of our restaurants, push out your satisfaction on your social media. Um, shop over the phone and local businesses to consider purchasing gift cards for future use by relatives or friends. Also check in on your local church's broadcasts. And don't forget to, to, um, uh, to make your donations, your regular donations online uh, since we're not attending in person. So these are, these are just some of the things I, I, I look to uh, uh, happen during the, the, the C-19 recovery. I mean, um, God bless America and God bless Douglas County. Together, we're going to get through this. Uh, the next question came from email. As commissioner, what have you done to fix the roads in our area? And I know this is a, a hot one in Douglas County. <laughs> well, it is, it is hot. It was hot at one point in time. I don't think it's not hot anymore. Um, well, when I took office back in 2000, in January 2017, the local roads were in pretty bad shape around the county. And when I say local roads as compared to roads in the towns of, in the, both towns or the three towns, or the general approval districts, because those areas, the, the towns and the GIDs, they enjoy significantly better roads than the rural areas of the county, which is where I live. Um, and the towns and the GIDs have, have better roads because the residents residing in these areas pay a significantly higher property tax rate than those of us who live in rural areas. And part of that higher tax rate is used to maintain their roads. So the county is, is uh, stuck to maintain other local roads as best they could with the resources they had or have. Um, since 2017, the, the board has redirected almost $5 million towards the maintenance of our rural local roads. Um, there's also a current balance in our road operating plan of almost $4 million, which will be used for the same purpose. Um, our road department has uh, quite a bit of maintenance scheduled uh, uh, beginning this spring, so look for the road department to be out and about doing their um, uh, annual maintenance. Um, and I think that's a great thing for the county, put people to work. It should also be noted that um, with the proceeds from the $16 million bond that was uh, secured by the uh, nickel gas tax, we have constructed, uh, reconstructed Jacks Valley Road from Genoa to, to Highway 395. We constructed Waterloo Lane from, from Centerville to Highway 88. We reconstructed Dresselville Road from Centerville to Riverview. And we also have reconstructed Dump Road and um, I believe Tillman Lane south of Kimberland. So these, these some of these roads have been uh, have not been maintained for decades. So I think. I think that we are really on top of local road maintenance. Uh, we can always do more. Um, 
but my pledge is that we will continue to fund uh, as much into the local road maintenance fund, road operating fund as we possibly can. The next question that came in also from email was um, asking about stormwater and as a commissioner, what you have done to manage stormwater. Okay, um, uh, the Board of County Commissioners really took decisive, decisive action in the, past, uh, in the past few years and created and funded the first ever Douglas County Stormwater Management Department to manage the countywide floodwaters mainly caused by either spring snow melt or summer thunderstorms. This was a bold move uh, by the board and, and was championed by Chairman Penzel and myself. And you have to realize that many of our past flood issues were caused by poor land mining, for instance, out in the Johnson Lane area. However, not equipped, now equipped rather, uh, with uh, uh, with staff and, and the proper equipment, uh, this new department is able to provide the local maintenance uh, in the local neighborhoods to better handle the stormwater. Um, additionally, the, the stormwater um, management department has been able to obtain grants for what they call area drainage studies, which are incorporated into area drainage master plans. Uh, or ADMPs. The, these uh, these ADMPs uh, for the Johnson Lane area have already been completed and they went to Rubenstrock and uh, will be completed in 2020. It's very important. These ADMs, uh, ADMPs are very important and very useful in obtaining federal and state grants to help with the construction of um, stormwater infrastructure. So we're hopeful that, would, uh, in, that in addition to the annual maintenance uh, of the stormwater facilities, uh, such as roadside ditches and culverts, which is provided by our new stormwater management department, in the future, the county can secure funds to create perhaps upstream detention facilities, which will slow floodwaters from coming, say, for instance, from the Pine Nut Mountains. Um, I think that pretty much covers what, I've, what we've done. Uh, together on the uh, on stormwater management. Before I get to this next question, I just want to remind people that there is a chat window. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, please, please, please um, go ahead and ask them. This next one um, is on growth and business coming to Douglas County. It came through Facebook. The question is, with new growth and businesses coming to Douglas County, I'm concerned about the traffic that may clog our towns and road, roadways. What is your proposal to alleviate this? Okay, the, the, uh, I think we're probably referring to traffic on Highway 395 mainly. Um, since, since 1967, there have been discussions on how the, the county would handle a traffic buildup on Highway 395 through Inman and Gardner Road. In the recent past, there have been several alternate routes that were proposed, one on the west side of the valley, one on the east side of the valley, one out in the climates. However, more recently, the board has adopted uh, the transportation plan, which is incorporated into our master plan, and which shows that the proposed Muller Parkway east of the towns would be the best alternative. In, in adopting the transportation plan, the, the board uh, pledged to build Muller Parkway by 2026 as NDOT had indicated that uh, the traffic levels on Highway 395 would reach the level of service of D by that year, and we don't want to go that far. Two years ago, our board adopted or decided to apply for a, what they call a federal build grant, BUILD grant, uh, in the amount of $25 million uh, to help with the construction of Muller Parkway. As you know, the, the, 
the north and south portions of Muller Parkway have already been completed and constructed. So we need to complete the middle part of this roadway, this proposed roadway, which is about, the middle part's about five miles uh, in length. We previously had uh, several development agreements with property owners that granted us the rights of way for the additional five miles. Uh, some on the north end, some on the south end, uh, where Virginia Ranch is going to be developed, um, and also with Park Cattle Company. And, the, and the, the agreement with Park Cattle Company, which is now known as Park Ranch Holding, um, that agreement was for about 3.5 miles of right away, and Park, Park was going to plant this right away in return for no development rights. In, in late 2018, the county and park wanted to amend that agreement for, I believe, among other things, a, a new alignment to the road. So because development agreements are really county ordinances, the ordinance must have two readings out of public meetings. So at the board meeting in November of 2018, the, bo the board voted uh, four, four to one to move forward with the second reading of this amended or new development agreement. Uh, Commissioner Belt Nelson voted no. At the December 2018 Board of County Commissioners meeting, the amendment uh, to the development agreement, to the park development agreement was was discussed and debated by the board at length. The board was deadlocked in 2-2 on approving the amendment, which again had no development rights attached to it. Commissioner Nelson cast the deciding May vote and the amendment to accept the park dedication for a right of way with no development rights just vanished, went away. Again, Commissioner Nelson cast the deciding they vote not to accept parks off of dedication of the right of way in return for no development rights. Well, this left us in a precarious position because we promised the citizens that we will build more of Parkway by 2026. So in, in, in 2019, um, a new development agreement with Park was approved 3-2 by the board uh, with Commissioner Beth Nelson casting one of the two labels. However, the, the, the new development agreement came with the stipulation that Park Ranch Holdings could change their land use designation on 1,044 acres of their land holdings along the Buckeye Road corridor from agriculture to receiving road. Mr. Park, in, 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 in negotiating this agreement, Mr. Park offered to limit uh, any new development, any new residential development in this new receiving area to 2,500 homes. And thus the no on 2,500 petition was introduced. But that's a different discussion. As of right now, the, the county staff voted, uh, not voted, but the county staff is working on a revised application for the build grant, which will be submitted this coming May, next month. I'm very, very optimistic that we stand a good chance for approval, especially in light of, of President Trump's pledge to put forth new legislation to rebuild and reconstruct our country's road and bridge infrastructure. My belief is that with, with this grant, uh, we'll be able to keep our pledge uh, to the county residents to build this alternate route uh, around the towns by 2026 and maintain a level of service C on Highway 395. If we don't, and without Muller Parkway, we'll have gridlock on, on Highway 395 by 2026. So I'm all for uh, building Muller Parkway and getting it done as soon as possible. And we got our first question from the chat um, from Steve Thaler. 
after elected as or reelected as I believe you will be, what will your priorities be for next year? Well, uh, my priorities, first of all, um, is going to be during the upcoming budget hearings. Um, we have um, the um, the outlook of, of having a big hit to our tax revenues um, because of um, um, lower sales tax revenue and transit occupancy occupancy tax revenues, which is paid by our visitors. Um, so that's one of the reasons, for example, that I'm, I'm for RDA2 because uh, it'll put people to work right away. But that will be one of my, my uh, priorities is to make sure that the budget is in balance, uh, that we have sufficient funds for all the services that we need to provide uh, uh, to the county residents. Um, I also, um, uh, I want to I want to keep a close eye on the um, uh, on the stormwater management department. I want to ensure our residents that we're capable and willing to take care of their local um, stormwater issues. Um, I mean, I, I probably have a, a hundred different priorities. I can't think of any right now other than those two. But uh, believe me, I'll be uh, looking out for. Um, uh, the welfare and safety of our residents. Uh, okay, the next question that came through via email, where do you stand on the Park Ranch Holdings 2,500 homes and how does this jive with your stance on supporting smart growth? Okay, so, so I already mentioned the no on 2,500 homes. So the question is where do I stand on the 2,500 homes and how, how does this match with my stance to support smart growth? Is that the question? That is correct. Well, first of all, no homes have been approved on the Park Ranch Holdings new receiving area along Buckeye Road since no application has been submitted for any development in any new receiving area. When an application is ultimately submitted by the Park family or whoever develops that property, both the town of Gardnerville and the town of Minden must approve any type of what we call a specific plan of land use. And then also the, the Planning Commission uh, must approve the application. And finally, the Board of County Commissioners will have at least two public meetings to discuss this. Um, the residents should understand that all of these will be well publicized public meetings and um, the public will have um, ample opportunity to give their input on what eventually may be developed upon that um, park receiving area. Um, Mr. Park agreed to limit any residential development on his receiving area to no more than 2,500 homes. However, we have, I, mean, I don't have any idea how many homes we've built or how much of the receiving area will be eventually developed. But what we do know is that any development in the receiving area requires a developer to purchase development rights from what we call ascending area, which are all the ag lands in the Carson Valley. And those rights are then transferred to the receiving area. Thus, you'll hear the term, and that's uh, uh, transfer development rights, which is better known as TDRs. That concept was created uh, when the 1996 master plan was adopted. Uh, it was created because prior to the 1996 master plan, uh, the uh, ranch lands all had one acre zoning. So for example, there are some 70,000 acres of ag land in the Carson Valley, and theoretically you could have 70,000 homes. But the master plan created what they call A19 or agriculture 19 acre zoning, so that on ranch lands currently, they can only develop 
one house per for 19 acres. With each TDR, which is purchased by the developer, a 19 acre parcel of ranch land or a good portion thereof will be conserved by the rancher. If, for example, 2,500 homes were ever to be built on the park receiving area, the developer will have to purchase 2,500 TDRs and theoretically take 2,500 times 19 acres. Theoretically, tens of thousands of acres of pristine ag land in the Crescent Valley would be preserved forever. This is done by the county where they place a uh, permanent um, conservation easement each, on each parcel of land that uh, the TDRs are transferred from. So this, and, and this easement, uh, this conservation easement transfers to any new Landover, it's in perpetuity. Uh, so this land will, uh, will be uh, preserved forever. Um, also, um, one of the policies under our current master plan is, is to put new development in what we call infill areas where existing development already exists around a proposed project. This is to kind of consolidate uh, infrastructure so that, uh, we're well, not infrastructure, but to consolidate development so that there's not hodgepodge development all over the county, which actually spreads the need for um, services, whether it's municipal sewer water or the sheriff's department or fire department. The, the park receiving area is surrounded by existing single family residents, and existing multifamily residents, uh, land uses. Uh, these are the MFR and single family uh, uh, land uses or commercial or, or retail or industrial and public facilities. And these land uses are currently in, in, in effect. Uh, and if uh, nothing's been built on them, the zoning is currently there. So, th so the new receiving area on the Park Ranch Holdings property is perfect infill uh, and coincides with the, the Minden and Gardnerville um, uh, joint plans for prosperity. The, the, the infill area on, on the Park Ranch property is also close to existing municipal sewer and water facilities, which any homes would have to hook up to. It's also close to the towns that provide all the services that we need. And it's supposed to be employment centers. In, in, in fact, the largest private employer in Douglas County is less than one quarter of a mile away from this receiving area. So just think that people who may be living in this receiving area in the future, they could bicycle to work or ride to work. So that's what I call smart growth. I believe um, it needs to be in areas where it makes sense to develop. And, and keep development off of the agricultural lands uh, and the sensitive um, um, lands that are in the floodplain and protect the Carson River um, watershed area. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, so another question that came in um, via chat was, how will you keep your pledge to protect our rural heritage and character? Well, obviously one way to keep the pledge is to, uh, like I just mentioned, to develop um, um, uh, in infill areas in the future. We all know that growth is inevitable. We have a growth management ordinance, what we call it the Building Permit Allocation and Growth Management Ordinance in Title 20. That limits growth uh, to 2% compounding annually. The the, um, the growth ordinance. People get get uh, upset or nervous uh, that there's going to be overbuilding in Douglas County when certain um, land uses are changed. For example, um, we we the board um, changed uh, zoning on 
uh, the property on a corner and on the east side of the corner of Highway 88 or the junction of Highway 88 and 395. Under the 1996 master plan, that was a zone for a hotel, casino, and a, and a, and a RV park. Well, uh, and, and for retail as well. Well, you know, as, as we go through social, economic, and environmental changes, um, we may need to change that zone from time to time. It's, it's, uh, it's inevitable. Uh, for instance, the internet has really put a hurt on, um, um, on retail shopping centers. So when the owner of that land came to us and requested a change from uh, most of that property from commercial to multifamily, it, it made sense. He wanted to put in high density housing, uh, which is one of the ways we can, we can address the affordable housing issue here in Douglas County. But under the code, uh, current code, we have no, um, no what we call interim zoning. We go from, from single family residential, 8,000 square foot lots right to multifamily. So at some point in time, I think we're gonna have to have a, a change in the, um, um, in the, in the Title 20, uh, Master, uh, Title 20 code. Um, but we, we changed that, uh, and there was a, some public outcry. Is why we're changing this from commercial to multifamily. We're going to have uh, riots in the neighborhood. We're going to have graffiti. We're going to have all these things. Well, I can tell you that that, that property right now, uh, which is under development, is being uh, going to be built as single-family detached homes on smaller lots and hopefully become more affordable so that uh, our workers here in Douglas County, uh, uh, sheriff deputies, the teachers, um, county employees, service workers can afford um, uh, those houses. Um, by, by changing the zoning on some of this property, we are, under our growth management ordinance, we are protecting any development on our rural agricultural areas to the west and to the north. Um, and this is a good thing. In fact, during my first three and a half years of sitting on the board, not one house has been built on agricultural land. Um, so the, the more we can, we can um, uh, use smart growth tactics and build where uh, we can concentrate development in the areas which I previously mentioned. Um, I think will really go a long way in, in, in protecting our rural character and, and heritage. Okay, I am loving, we're getting questions from the chat. Here's another one. Uh, Commissioner Walsh, please spend a minute talking about the staff you have working for the county. Good question. Um, Right now, we're, we have a, uh, minimized the staff because of the social distancing regulations um, or guidelines, I should say. Um, but let me address staff. When, when, when I first took office in, in 2017, we were lacking in some of the top um, management positions in the county. Since that time, we have hired a new county manager, an assistant county manager, a CFO, who I give very, very high marks. Do I give them all high marks? Uh, community development director, a public works director, An accounting engineer. Those are, the, I think, are all the top manage, management positions uh, within the county, and um, they all report to the county manager. Of course, the county manager reports to the board. But with that staff, we have, um, uh, and, and with the new employment contracts that we signed uh, back a couple of years ago, we have really stabilized uh, the staff. We've had less 
um, staff turnover. Uh, and I think uh, uh, we have established a staff that that lends itself to our, um, what do you call it, our, um, I can't think of the name of the, the term, um, where one, one position uh, opens up and one of our lower county employees can, can uh, step into the position. Someone who's been trained, uh, if they so inclined to do so. Uh, uh, and so I, uh, I think we have a great staff now, um, and I'm excited uh, going into the new, uh, uh, a new fiscal year uh, that this staff has had a, a year under their belt, uh, and we can really move forward and do great things for the county. Another question from chat. What are your strengths over your opponent? Well, I, I've known my opponent for a couple of years since he moved to the county. Um, I don't know too much about his background, so um, I, I won't speak to that. But I know he's got uh, information now on, on what he's done over his career, but I will tell you this. Uh, after I graduated from, from St. John's University in, uh, uh, in, in, in Queens, New York in 1969, um, I received a, a BS in, in, in accounting with a minor in economics. And I've had 40 plus years of experience in the financial world, the tax world, uh, tax planning world. Uh, I was a, uh, um, I worked for a number of uh, uh, Fortune 500 um, companies in their tax departments. I was a partner in a tax and financial firm, planning firm in, in San Francisco. So with that experience, I, I think I have good management experience. I have um, uh, great budgetary experience. Um, and I think um, uh, over those 40 years having to make decisions um, uh, on budgets and employees and, and county and not county but in uh, company direction uh, i think i, I stand uh, head over heels over my uh, my opponent and he's actually new to this county i've been here for 30 years and um, i've been on the, the douglas county planning commission i have a very good working relationship with the agricultural community um, you can witness that as you go around the county see my highway signs on a lot of the ranch properties. I have a very, very good working relationship with the um, local business and industry community. I'm a um, member of the Carson Valley Chamber of Board of Directors. I'm a member of the Carson Valley um, Business Authority Board of Directors. I'm a member of the Western Nevada Development uh, District Board of Directors. Uh, so I, I, I'm in constant contact with with um, the business community uh, and, and we're working together on, like i said before on finding ways to recover from this um, this c COVID 19 uh, crisis um, but i have the business community's interest at heart um, you will see for instance on my CD reports that i re i received donations from some of the business community of course they would support me as i support them when I ran for office in 2016, uh, I said we needed to fill up our industrial parks. We have three or four of them here in the, in the Carson Valley that uh, remain almost half empty. But we've got some really, really good companies uh, in the last three years. Companies like Chris Tech and, and uh, uh, VIP uh, Plastics and Rubber and, and uh, uh, the, Mac, the um, Franklin Armory. Uh, those those companies are clean, really good industries uh, with good, high-paying jobs, and that's what I'm all about. I want to want to bring those county those those types of uh, um, companies uh, into Douglas County. We have um, we had some issues in some of our industrial parks because they didn't have the required infrastructure. Um, for instance, they didn't have broadband out at the airport industrial center or the Johnson Heat Industrial Center. And since then, uh, working with NNDA, 
Um, some of the developments have actually been site certified so that when a good company comes into Douglas County, or wants to come into Douglas County, they can take a look at the site that's ready to go. Uh, or want to have too many issues with, with uh, building permits, and those are the kind of companies um, that I, uh, I would really like. Um, so, um, again, my experience, I think, is, is uh, much better, much more suited to a county commissioner job than my opponent. Um, and of course, uh, with, a, with the shutdown we're going through right now, um, you know, we, we really need uh, experience, leadership, decisive leadership. Um, hope that answers the question. Um, okay, we have another one from the chat that kind of goes back to talking about staff, uh, county employees and staff. Uh, the question was, how many do you have on furlough as we are in a huge shutdown right now, or are they all being paid? Right now, all the county employees are, are being paid. Um, uh, they are, um, uh, the majority of them, not the majority, but many of them are working from home. We have um, rotating staff in and out of the county offices to provide um, uh, critical services to our residents. That would be the kind of clerk's office, the treasurer's office, the assessor's office, uh, the reporter's office, the men that in where the county um, administrative offices are. Uh, you have to make appointments uh, to, um, to get into any one of those offices, but you can do that on our, on our website. Does that answer the question? Um, okay, the next question that we had um, via email was about water. Um, what steps have you taken to protect water supply? Good question. Um, I, am, I am also on the board of directors of the Carson Water Acceptance Service, which, which manages the Carson watershed, which is approximately 5,000 square miles, ranging from Malpine County all, all the way out to Churchill County. Uh, I've learned a lot uh, about water. Uh, I, I know that the USGS, the US Geological Center, um, is, is, uh, has worked on water studies in our valley. Uh, one of the things that we did, which uh, very, very important is that um, we, we, um, we, the board, uh, took the bold step to, to consolidate a lot of our water systems. We have individual water purveyors for uh, some, some systems out in uh, some subdivision out in the West Valley, some of the lake. And, and we consolidated, uh, I don't know how many of them. Of these water purveyors into a Carson Valley water utility. And we were able to, uh, to stabilize the water rates, base water rates, which is great for the uh, water users. Uh, so the base rates are the same, except for say, up in Lake Tahoe, where they have some ongoing issues with some of the water systems and some of the infrastructure coming out of that problem. And then uh, anything over the base rate is based on usage, so it, it encourages uh, conservation. Uh, we've heard from the USGS that uh, we have perhaps one of the largest, purest aquifers in the state of Vermont. You know, uh, we often hear uh, us talking about an acre square. Uh, Acre foot of water. Well, an acre foot of water is 325,000 gallons. USGS recently did a study that said that we had our aquifer was over 2 trillion acre feet. I mean, I can't even calculate how many gallons. Um, 
However, even with that large aquifer, our uh, growth target on the master plan is limited to the amount of water that is recharged into that aquifer every year. That water, the recharge obviously comes from rain and snow that drops on the mountain ranges. Um, so, for example, um, our recharge, annual recharge is 50,000 acre feet of water. Our, our targeted, I forget exactly what it is, but our targeted uh, growth, uh, which is basically tied to our growth ordinance, our target growth um, is tied to the amount of annual recharge. Uh, so uh, that's one way of, of protecting our aquifer. Another way to protect our aquifers, again, is to use smart growth. We, uh, we uh, really need to put both uh, concentrated in, in, in close to the ground, so again, where all the services are available, uh, putting growth out on large parcels out in the rural areas of Douglas County, all new air exact exasperates the, the issue we have with nitrates. Some of the areas have, where the aquifer have nitrates, like that in the Zanzibar, and that will be stuff right away. So the less, um, the less dipping the straws into the aquifer with new domestic water wells and the less um, uh, amount of uh, uh, septic tanks uh, that are uh, built in the, in the county will help protect that nitrate bloom, so to speak, that we have. So there are a lot of different ways that we can protect the water. Another uh, is to, uh, to check the, the price of value runs through Applying uh, agricultural land, uh, excuse me, the Carson River runs through applying agricultural land. So it's, it's very important that we protect those lands uh, along the uh, uh, the Carson uh, the Carson River. Uh, we, we we actually uh, denied a project uh, not too long ago that was going to be built on, uh, on land next to the Carson River uh, near near Moore Lane, just south of Moore Lane. So we take those steps to. Um, to protect our, our uh, aquifer, and, and uh, I, I believe we're doing a good job. Uh, and again, I think smart growth is a terrific way uh, to uh, help protect the quantity and, and quality of our uh, aquifer. Any other questions? Uh, yes, we have another one from chat. Um, Due to the fact that um, COVID-19 is shutting down uh, meat processing plants around the country, um, temporarily, of course, what are your thoughts or have your thoughts changed on a small local meat processing facility here in Carson Valley? Um, I, I, I voted uh, against the, the uh, slaughterhouse um, on um, 88 and, and uh, Senator, I believe it was, because um, that was right in the middle of the valley. And, and I, uh, the, the proposed um, septic system that we had uh, was not guaranteed, so it could fail. And I did not want to jeopardize the, the quality of our aquifer. We had a very high water table where that was proposed. But on the other hand, I, I, I do highly. I uh, think and recommend that we consider a, um, a meatpacking and slaughterhouse uh, facility um, in the valley. I think the ranching community should get together, all of them should get together and decide uh, how to go about developing such a facility. I, I believe it, it belongs on industrial land and we could actually build it out somewhere near the airport uh, uh, where there is no residential development. And, uh, uh, so I would. I definitely um, support a, um, uh, a meat packing and a slaughterhouse facility that, that made sense for everybody. Okay, and looking at the time, because I imagine this last question is probably going to be a doozy. Um, why did you vote in favor of the Tahoe Event Center and not dissolving redevelopment area number two at State Line, aka RDA2? 
Holy moly, that's a loaded question. Um, let me let me let me start by saying that the, the petition that was circulated to repeal RDA2 states that the majority of the estimated $113 million collected over the 30-year life of the RDA will be used to fund an $80 million event center at State Line with the expectation of more visitors to casinos and surrounding businesses. I think that's their biggest lie. I mean, RDA to make like $113 million over a 25 year period, but that seems unlikely. And even so, the, the tax, the tax increment pledge that the county agreed to with the Tahoe Douglas Visitors Authority for support of the event center bond will be capped at $34.25 million over a 25 year period, not $113 million, not $80 million, $34.25 million. What the, what the petitioners failed to acknowledge is that over that same 25 year period, it's estimated that the event center will generate some $39 million in sales tax, in addition to sales tax, and TOT tax, transit occupancy tax, which is paid by visitors. And this is a conservative estimate. So the county will be the benefactor of almost $5 million additional tax dollars during the 25 year pledge agreement. And you know, there's, there's also other projects, including the, the redevelopment or the rebuilding of Kale Drive, which is a county road, the, the rehabilitation of the Kale Community Center built some 20 plus years ago, which needs a lot of help, and possibly funding an additional fire station in state line, all of which can be funded from the RDA. I think the petitioners fail to recognize other much needed improvements that could occur because of the RDA. And one of the worst lies of all is the allegation that Valley taxpayers will see their taxes increase to pay for the event center and the county will be liable for any default. I mean, lies, lies, lies. I, the, no taxpayer living outside the RDA district boundary will contribute one penny of their tax dollars to pay the event center. Let me repeat that. No taxpayer living outside the RDA district boundary will, contri boundary will contribute one penny of their tax dollars to pay for the event center. And the tax increment pledge agreement with the Tahoe Douglas Visitors Authority approved uh, at the last uh, board meeting ensures that the county and its residents will in no way incur any liability if the event center fails. The, 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 the tax increment generated by RDA2 will be paid directly by the property owners that are within the RDA district boundaries, boundaries which include the State Line Casino Corridor, Edgewood, and the Tahoe Beach Park. This is state line properties reinvesting in their own economic endeavors. One of the, one of the reasons I fully support the event center is uh, when I ran in 2016, is that it'll be a catalyst for our tourism industry. And the truth is that more than 32% of the Douglas County workforce works in tourism related businesses. That's almost one third of the county economy. So why shouldn't we want to do everything in our power to support the event center. Some say the, the event center will not meet the expectations of drawing convention goers around the globe. I say that Lake Tahoe is and has been one of the top tourist destinations in the entire world. I believe the industry market experts who tell us that the South Tahoe event center will indeed draw folks from around the well, I believe they're correct. I also want to say that the petition has failed to mention that the county property tax revenues collected from the state line have decreased by about a million dollars over the last 10 years. They also failed to mention that the hospitality properties at the lake eliminated almost 7,000 jobs over that same 10 year period. These um, these 7,000 individuals were an integral part of our fabric in our community and creating at least hundreds of new jobs at the event center will return some of those 
some of those lost jobs. Um, finally, the truth is that, that two petitioners against the RDA are also running for county commission, along with one incumbent, one incumbent commission. They do not support anything. They're against anything that will move the county forward. They are anti-business. They do not see a positive way in any county program. They have no vision for the future. In fact, the incumbent county commissioner was vehemently opposed to the Douglas County Community and Senior Center when it was built, which has since won national awards for the services it provides to our, to our residents. So these, these know on everything folks are not concerned about the economic recovery of Douglas County. I'm concerned. I'm concerned about moving the county forward, about getting residents back to work, about uh, protecting the county's tax revenue sources. And, and I believe the construction and the operation of the event center in RDA2 will be a success. We can all look back, back on uh, in, in years to come. I see we're getting close to our end time. Any more questions? Um, we are close to our end time. I do want to give you a chance. So we had a few people just join us within the last 10 minutes. Um, but I, and I, I'm, I'm sad they joined us in the last 10 minutes, but this will be available on um, Larry's website and on his social platforms. But Larry, do you want to take the last couple of minutes um, before we end our time together to just give your, your last thoughts for tonight and do a, a wrap up? Well, I, you know, I think that many of the comments I've, I've made tonight demonstrate uh, my commitment to Douglas County uh, and show um, what we've done in large part because I'm now on the county commission. Um, I think I have the experience to, um, to be a leader, a decisive leader in, in Douglas County. Um, and frankly, I enjoy what I do. Um, proud to, um, to continue, continue to, to serve as your commissioner. And when I say your commissioner, I mean the commissioner, even though I'm commissioner of district, district three, I represent the entire county. And I'm very proud, proud to do that. So thank you. Thanks, Larry. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for showing up and participating. Uh, this is part of the process and this has been brand new and crazy. Um, and thank you for joining us on this crazy ride as we do our first town hall virtually. Um, we are going to be doing another one of these next week. It's gonna be same bat time, same bat channel. So Wednesdays at 6.30, we will get all of the events up via Facebook so you can get that registration link and sign up and join us again next week or share with any family and friends that may not have been able to join us tonight but would be interested in a Q&A with Larry. Thanks so much. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank you.